Okay, hello everyone. It is exam time, and exam time can mean only one thing, which is syntax charts. This is an area in Latin which very often we find quite difficult. So I've decided that I'd just do this presentation to try and help us to work through it and give a couple of examples. Now, I obviously needed to be careful. I can't use the stories that might be in our exams. So what I've done is that I'm going to take syntax from the comprehensions. Now, by that I mean the second stories in the book. You will need your yellow book in order to uh, get the most out of this presentation and you can look at the comprehension passages and we'll work through some of the syntax of that together. Okay, first of all let's look at the syntax itself. So, here we actually have the, the base format of the syntax chart for year 10s in semester 1. First of all, we have the column that is the word itself. Then we have the part of speech. Part of speech means noun, adjective, adverb, etc. Case, nominative, accusative, genitive. Person, first person, second person, third person. Number, singular or plural. Tense, present, imperfect, perfect, etc. And then we have voice, active or passive. And finally, the reason or special feature. Now what this might be would be something like, uh, it could be superlative or comparative. Or it might be uh, the reason why a word is an accusative, which would be that it is describing the object of the sentence, or it might be time when ablative. Those are the sorts of things that we find in the reason or special feature, or indeed just the word participle. Okay, turning over then, in your books, I hope to page 105, you will find the death of Cicero and various different words highlighted, which will act as examples for our syntax chart. So the first word that you have there is vehementius. You'll see underneath it, you have the number two. That means that two of the boxes are applicable. Two of the boxes need to be filled in for this particular word. So, at the top of page 105, you have the first sentence. Nemo, no one had attacked Antony more violently than Cicero. Wehementius is our word. What kind of word is it? What's it part of speech? Well, it is an adverb. And the reason or special feature is comparative. It is a comparative adverb because it ends with I-U-S. None of the other boxes need to be filled out, and we get the marks for that. Jussi sunt. Jussi sunt, you'll see in line two. Antony himself had sent, sorry, just sent a band of men who were ordered to kill him. Jussi sunt. They were ordered. Part of speech, it's a verb. Verbs don't have cases. It is third person, plural, perfect. The voice is passive. And verbs don't have a reason or a special feature. Obibo, you have at the end of the first paragraph. I shall meet death. Obibo, part of speech. Verb, first person, singular. Tense is future. The voice is active. It's not I shall be met, it's I shall meet. Reason or special feature does not apply here. Then we have the word quam. Quam is a relative pronoun. Its case is accusative. It doesn't have a person. It is singular. It doesn't have a tense. It doesn't have a voice. Its reason or special feature is because it is describing the object in its particular clause. Now, this is complicated because remember that a relative clause goes in the same number as in singular or plural as the word that it describes. It goes in the same gender as in masculine, feminine, or neuter as the noun that it describes. But it goes in the case that is required in its own particular clause. I shall die in the fatherland, quam, which I have saved so often. These were Cicero's final words. Filled, I'm sure you will agree, with hubris and arrogance. It's uh, not surprising that people killed him if that was the kind of stuff that he was saying all the time. So quam, here, it is the object. It is describing the object in its own particular clause. And finally, probably the most difficult word, is relatum, which is found in... I believe, not the penultimate line, line 10 of this passage. What part of speech is it? Well, it's a verbal adjective because it's a participle. So, it is a participle or verbal adjective. Case, now here it's case, is the nominative case. Nominative case. Person, participles don't have persons. Number, it is singular. Tense, it is perfect because it is a perfect. And voice, passive. Perfect, passive participle. The actual sentence means his head, relatum, having been carried back to Antony, affixum s, was fixed in between the two hands on that rostrum in which he had attacked Antony so often.
with such eloquence. So, the relatum there is a perfect passive participle. Its reason or special feature is PPP, perfect passive participle. And it's also, you need to write down it as nominative because it's describing the subject, the caput, the head. Over here, you will see we have the completed syntax chart. So why not pause this and then check that you've got everything right. I hope this has been useful. I'm going to do another one for you shortly. Thank you and best of luck with your syntax charts, everyone.